Last year, we told you about issues raised by one company holding a patent on the genes that cause breast and ovarian cancer. All that changed this past June when the Supreme Court unanimously struck down the patents. The Supreme Court ruling is uh, very important. It's a very exciting time in genomic medicine. BRCA1 and 2 are the two most common genes associated with breast and ovarian cancer. For one family, the decision hit close to home. Patricia Zakiki is a nurse, but her attention to health issues started early in life. This is my mother's entire family. Uh, grandma and grandpa are down in here, and they had nine children. In this picture, the three girls, including my mother and this sister, had a very aggressive ovarian cancer that once they were diagnosed, only lasted for three to six months. Because of that, I always went for my checkups and did what they advised and felt that my girls should be very, very cautious. Patricia has four children, and last year things changed for the whole family when Kathy went for her gynecological exam and literally saw something on the wall. Just a little sign that said, does one or more, one or more of your you know, immediate family have ovarian or breast? Inquire about the BRCA testing. Impulsively, she got the test that very day and received a phone call three weeks later saying, you need to come in with your husband and I knew immediately, but I still thought it was gonna be ovarian because we had never heard of breast in our family. We sort of all decided together that this was gonna be, our answer was to have prophylactic surgery to remove the ov ovaries and the fallopian tubes and to also go forward with a double mastectomy as a preventative measure. What is unique about Patty is that she was tested BRCA positive, chose to have prophylactic mastectomy and at surgery, surprise to everyone, was diagnosed with breast cancer. The genetic testing saved my life for sure yeah. because of the aggressive nature of this um, cancer. By the time it would have been found, it probably would have been spread far from the breast and, and been much worse. Back in May, Angelina Jolie shocked the world when she revealed she'd done exactly the same thing after testing positive. Because of Angelina's announcement, my phone has not stopped ringing. I think that her announcement has given some of my patients who are BRCA positive courage to make decisions and uh, comfort that they're not alone. The decision making as far as having the prophylactic surgery was very easy. It was never a question for me um, because I want to see my kids grow up. I want to be a grandmother and see my kids get married. All three sisters moved ahead, but it took an extra push to get the brother there too. I've got four girls. So my wife, who's very optimistic, you know, she, she was the one who really pushed as far as wanting to get this testing done as well. All four of those were BRCA positive. The chances of having one person positive and then the subsequent three is only about one in 20. It's about 5%. For these siblings, their prime concern is the next generation. My daughter's decision was to wait till she's 25, see where she's at in her life, and um, you know, probably test then. By testing early, um, first we might be able to avoid the 20% of cancers that happen in a woman's 20s and 30s, um, but it also affords us an opportunity to discuss a variety of management options. Those who are afraid to get tested need to know surgery is not the only way to prevent cancer. There are specialized surveillance programs, mammograms, MRIs, ultrasounds to help monitor these patients. There are estrogen receptor blockers that can drop your risk by as much as 50 to 60 percent. The knowledge may also affect a woman's decision on when to have a child. Perhaps she wants to freeze eggs. She, perhaps she wants to check and see if her eggs are BRCA positive. But all of these options are only available to the woman who's gone through genetic counseling and testing. The red flags for testing are family histories of breast cancer and ovarian cancer. I think prostate cancer and more recently even pancreas cancer is included in our decision making. I would caution women that if your history is on the father's side or on the male side of your family, that counts just as much. Seeing my sisters go through what they went through is, uh, they're my heroes. As for Joe, the jury is still out on what he might be at risk for. He does want men to be better informed and has advice for other dads. Get tested. Have the test. 
it, it doesn't hurt. And again, knowledge is power. And to be able to, to, to kind of monitor your kids as they mature and make them stay on top of things, it, it's huge. All I know is that this has been probably the worst time of my life. I never wanted my children to have to go through any of this. I feel guilty because of it. I'm usually a very, very strong person, but I have not been very strong in the last two years since their tests were positive. <laughs> Today I feel good. Today's a good day. I do have my bad days. It's what was thrown in my path, and I'll do what I need to do to get through it. We'll be right back with the confusion surrounding when to get a baseline mammogram and a groundbreaking new procedure that could help avoid a recurrence with the clever use of immunotherapy. And would you believe it? Ice.